Welcome back to Thrive the Matrix, where we help each other thrive reality, not as it could have, would have, should have been, but as it is. Today I'm coming to you with our third in the series of I'm an Arc, Get Me Out of Here, Celebrity Edition, in which we're theorizing on if the diddler, Sean Combs, has narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. Spoiler alert, based on my unofficial opinion, the theorizing thus far, and the theorizing to come, he most certainly does. To keep a long introduction short, I am only a certified professional life coach, thus I can only theorize. I never diagnose and absolutely never theranose. In the last two videos, I've shared a brief overview of the case, the alleged behaviors, crimes, and NPD, and overview of narcissistic personality disorder. I'll do so again, but I've included a chapter skip function option if needed to proceed straight to the analysis. We know earlier this month the SDNY handed down a bombshell indictment for the arrest of Sean Diddy Combs. The indictment charged Diddy with running a criminal enterprise primarily in the service of coordinated freak-offs in which Diddy would gratify his sexual desires after coercing victims via drugging and violence to participate in days-long orgies that sometimes included the need for IV drips for participants to recover. As far as MPD, we know that narcissistic personality disorder is a mental disorder characterized by narcissistic and pathological defense mechanisms designed to maintain a false self constructed to protect from an inherent core feeling of shame. Those with MPD have so much shame, in fact, they believe they're irredeemingly bad, so much so that if anyone discovered how bad they really were, it could literally destroy them. The stakes are that high. In this video, we'll examine the shame of P. Diddy Combs. It's important to note that there may be no realistic basis for the shame narcissists run away from using a false persona to hide their true reality. In her book, The Power of Vulnerability, shame researcher Brene Brown made this contrast. Guilt is doing something bad. Shame is being something bad. Often, those with MPD believe they are bad just because, and they believe this emphatically. Thus, the need for their persona to successfully mimic the attitudes and outward behaviors of what they believe would be a typical person. Without the mask, we'd see these people for what they are, not much in reality, but certainly nothing good. It's case in point when considering the manipulation and abuse they inflict often behind the scenes. In this case, given what I've heard in the court of public opinion, I have a theory for the diddler which might assign more motive than usual as to why he is alleged to act as he did. In other words, there's more shame here than meets the eye. I empathize deeply with those who allegedly had to suffer at the hands of a man that acted in the interest of divorcing his true nature, no matter the costs. It's unnecessary and tragic. The reporting I've seen, which is only that, seems to establish a pattern that might explain his toxic actions. While not charged in the indictment of the diddler, there are reports that the after parties he held and the associated freak ops weren't limited to the exploitation of just women. In fact, there's video evidence that points to his grooming of male pop stars, which I won't name as number one, those people aren't the subject of this video, and number two, their victims. Naming them or exploiting these potential names in the absence of hard evidence, a statement, or charges is irresponsible, although plenty of celluloid exists for you to extrapolate names for those unfortunate that I'm speaking about. Aside from these people, there seems to be enough conjecture in the public eye to substantiate, at least theoretically, that the diddler engaged in sex acts with other men and often. That's no crime and absolutely nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about. However, as someone who has built his star on being the epitome of masculinity with the gangster mythology, it's not a stretch to think that any perception of him as less than a man, and to be clear, being gay does not make one less than a man, would trigger his intense shame inspiring the alpha male persona and necessitate that he act on his impulses while simultaneously keeping them hidden and at bay. While most would agree it changes afoot, homosexuality and the hip-hop culture have not always been compatible, so his sexuality as the basis for his shame makes sense. Remember my comment that the exposed inner shame of the narcissist is a life-and-death proposition? Taken in context, this information perfectly illustrates why. The real shame in the end is that P. Diddy would have been in an excellent position, if what I'm theorizing is true, to live authentically as times changed and support others doing the same. Of course, this did not happen. It seems at every turn Diddy invested more in the fake persona he most likely believed got him where he was. Until the raid in his homes, it's safe to say Diddy was a pop culture icon, one that many looked up to. He had everything in the world, looks, power, and a fortune rumored to be at least a half billion dollars or more. The irony in all this? The diddler frequently bragged about sparing no expense. In reality, there was one luxury he simply couldn't afford, being himself. For shame, Puff Daddy. 
So that is the shame of Sean P. Diddy Combs. Join me for the next in the series of I'm a Narcissist, Get Me Out of Here, where we continue to theorize about the possible MPD of Puff Daddy. Until next time, Thrivers, stay up.